rolling here. Um, the first order of business to the Finance Committee is to approve last month's committee meeting minutes. Motion made by Supervisor Bramer, seconded by Supervisor Strau. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. O's carry. Okay. On to the action agenda. We have uh, item one is a request for transfer of funds. Uh, we need committee approval for all of these. They are in your packet. Quite a mm -hmm. list of them this uh, this month. Motion made by Supervisor Garrity. Seconded by Supervisor Strau. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carry. Okay, item two. We have our county treasurer at the podium. Um, go ahead, Michael. Take it away. Good morning, everybody. Um, first item A is um, this was this company is does our actuarial audits which are done every other year this is a, a required audit that we have to do and basically what they're looking at um, is to make sure that we're doing the proper amount of work to make sure we're saving money in other words we're not wasting any money this is what they're doing um, the company is changing names we will still be dealing with the same people so we want to just change the name on the contract and the other thing is is the termination date the year that's being audited is 2019 but the actual work for it won't be done until 2020 and always in the past we've had this contract dated as to the end of the year that was audited not the year that the audit was being done so what we're trying to do is make because this way it makes it cleaner when we go to pay the bill we are we are looking at um, paying something in one year that was done in another year because the audit is actually done in 2020. Okay, motion made by Supervisor Garrity, seconded by Supervisor Merlino. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay, B. B. Um, we talked about and there was a, a, a resolution went through last month about NICLAS, which is a as a, an investment group that's basically we've been given permission from the controller and several other counties are already doing it and it this is and I have to take the heat for this I did not realize at the time when we approved this that I needed to have the chairman sign the original agreement and that we were piggybacking off of another contract from up north in one of the other counties to do this so we need a resolution to authorize the chairman to sign the original agreement and to um, acknowledge that we're piggybacking off another contract. So we'll just take that out of your salary, the two and a quarter percent. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, motion made by Supervisor Molino, seconded by Supervisor Dickinson. Uh, any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Item three, referrals from economic growth and development. Uh, under planning, we have a request to establish capital project, uh, the Scroon Lake Invasive Species Prevention and Control Program, and this is for the amount of $386,334. Motion made by Supervisor McDevitt, seconded by Supervisor Garrity. Uh, any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Gary. Mm -hmm. We have item four, which is referral from the Environmental Concerns and Real Property Tax Services Committee. Um, this one is a request to appropriate funds in the amount of $10,000 from the Environmental Testing Reserve Fund uh, to the Real Property Tax Services uh, contract to cover the cost of paying the New York State Department of Environmental Cons Conservation for cleanup tank removal in the town of Chester, and that's uh, Thermal Home Incorporated. <coughs> motion made by Supervisor Garrity, seconded by Supervisor Second. Bramer. Um, any discussion on this? Go ahead, Mayor. Okay. I just wanted to clarify, we talked about this in environmental concerns and real property, um, and we weren't sure if they were going to want 10000 or 15000 from the county. Um, we clarified that day with them that they're only seeking 10000 from the county, and we also cleaned up the language in the contract, so it shouldn't be confusing anymore. Yeah. Michael? Just so that you understand, we are on the hook for the first $10,000 we spent. Anything over that, the state will pick up the cost, just so they understand. And they will not start until we uh, commit that $10,000. Supervisor McDevitt. 
Yeah. Uh, thank you for that uh, clarification. I, I, I guess my question would be uh, uh, other type of polluted properties in terms of uh, the amenability of the state of New York to uh, put in place the same kind of program. We'll, we'll cover the first 10 and uh, they'll pick up the additional whatever. Well, we've already done this up in the, in the Johnsburg, the larger property up there, it was 15000 on that one. Okay. And we split that, and I believe, don't hold me to this figure, but I think at this point, uh, the PTC has already spent 170000 on right. right, which is phenomenal, yeah. right, phenomenal for us. And I, 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 I don't mean to uh, continue to re remind the uh, board basically on the one issue with the property in Queensbury, uh, you know, and I just don't know if we've moved any, any closer to a resolution uh, status, uh, ability to, you know, get the same kind of a reimbursement from the state of New York. Go ahead, Supervisor. Yeah. Yeah. We, Lexi has been working very hard on this. DEC's initial response, like I mentioned in environmental concerns, is that that property in Queensbury is not bad enough and they will not t take the responsibility for cleaning it up. However, she has reached out to someone else, I think they're in the comptroller's office, who thought that there might be additional funding um, stream somewhere else. So we are, Lexi is pursuing that and we're trying to get that. One of the problems for us, for the Bay Road site, is that there are no underground storage tanks which could be potentially leaking. That's why DEC won't jump on it. This other property, my understanding is there are underground storage tanks there and they're worried they could be leaking so they will, will spend the money to get them out of there before they start leaking. The other property, it was just contamination that was coming from the operation. You know, there aren't any underground storage tanks still, still sitting there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we have to look for a different funding stream and Lexi's been working very hard on that. Just, just a, a quick question because I don't know this. Uh, how, how long has this piece of property been sitting there in this state? Which property? Uh, the, the one in Queens. Mullen Mullen Bay? Bay? Yeah, yeah. 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 Bay Road. Yeah, but how long? Uh, 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 gallery. Hold, hold on. I got a... Yeah. It's been 10 years that it's been in foreclosure. Or not in foreclosure, but 10 years in foreclosure. Yeah. So, I... I, I how long has it been in that boarded up state? That, 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 that I couldn't tell you. It's been a long time. So it could be longer than 10. Yeah. Okay. You know, John? You know? Well, actually, the town of Queensbury was the one that boarded the building up. Yeah, we did. And um, and I don't remember when that happened. But no, it was about 10 years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, what, where we are right now is um, Lexi's trying to see if there's money set aside or could be set aside to evaluate the building. So it makes a big difference if we can rouse the building, clean up the site without asbestos or other contaminants lead versus a clean site that for all practical purposes is clean of contaminants and we can just go clean it, take it to, you know, uh, a construction dump. <coughs> You know, even even taking down the building and cleaning up the site is going to probably be, you know, eighty, ninety thousand dollars. And then we'd like to make it a parking area for the bike trail since it's right next to the bike trail. And not only that, but if you look at um, a bike route, it's also connected to a bike route that takes it to another part of the city and town. So it's an excellent location for a parking area. And it will clean it up, and uh, you know we can do some landscaping. But you know, first of all, we got to find out if that building has got contaminants in it. So, Lexi was looking into that. Michael? Uh, yeah, just to give you a further update, the property for the first time is in the delinquent foreclosure proceeding right now, and I asked that it be put in. If we get to the end near September and we run into a problem and we don't feel that we want to take it, we can always pull it out of the action. But the county can't really do anything other than testing because we don't have title to it. It still belongs to the loan. So in order for it to become a parking lot or to do anything with it, we need to get the title. And, and the only way to get title is to leave it in the foreclosure process. So we put it in there so that hopefully maybe we can get this all resolved through the summer and then in the fall, take title to it and then institute the plan, whatever we can come up with. That sounds good. 
Supervisor Bramer. Um, two other things. So as far as taking title, I'm, I'm worried about that, but Lexi is also talking to this person um, about getting more language in our agreement or maybe a separate release from DEC that says we will not be responsible going forward. So we could take title and have that documentation from DEC saying none of the contamination is our problem, is not, we're not responsible because we didn't take title to it until later. Yeah, I mean, we didn't, we're not the ones who were responsible for okay. contaminating the property. Like so that. we're working Thank on that side too, which will protect us um, on the legal end. And the other thing I wanted to say is um, when I was in D.C. with Supervisor Simpson, we talked to um, Congresswoman Stefanik, and I think maybe we could get some money from the Northern Border Regional Commission, which Warren County ha ha mm -hmm. is now in, mm -hmm. and we can use money for recreational purposes. Mm -hmm. So I'm theoretically hoping we can say we need to clean up this property, put it in the, make it a bike, park, bike path parking lot, and use idea. some of that money. That's so I'm idea. going yeah. to the forum on yeah, Tuesday, I'm the workshop, whatever. Hopefully, hopefully learn more about that. Okay, I, okay. I didn't mean to bring up the topic. Well, I was just going to say, so maybe we could bring this back up, that environmental Thank concern. Not yeah, we'll put it on the agenda for um, the Sorry, second. Sorry, let me apologize. There you go. Okay, we do have a motion and a second. Any more discussion, by the way? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you, Mary. Uh, item 5, referral from Health, Human, and Social Services. Under public health, we have a request to amend the county budget in the amount of $1,500 reflect additional funding from Adirondack Health Institute's Population Health Improvement Program Healthy Community Design Project. Benefit families participating in the WIC program. Motion made by Supervisor Frazier, seconded by Supervisor Strau. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay. Item 6, referral from Public Works under yeah. DPW. Um, we have some capital projects here, A, B, and C. Uh, the first one being 13th Lake Road. Um, then we have County Route 11 and County Route 32. Anybody would like to move all three of these? Made by Supervisor Garrity, second by Supervisor Molino. Any discussion on any of these? Go ahead, Supervisor Brandon. Thanks. What are we, um, did you call me? Sorry. What are we increasing them? Is it just because they are needing more money? Uh, our our uh, I highway superintendent. They are. Uh, aren't they uh, culvert replacement? They they are. As you recall earlier in the DPWPA, I announced that we received five and a half million dollars from Bridge New York as support for what these projects are. These are the three culvert projects. We also have two bridge bridge projects that we bring in as well. At the next meeting, right? So, yeah. And yeah. These are these are the Culver Project for New York, which are 100% funded by New York. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we do have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry it. Item D, request to establish the following new road projects. Um, County Route 3, Warrensburg Road, in the amount of $327,787.64. We have County Route 49, Cool Ridge Hill Road. In the amount of three hundred eighty-four thousand seven hundred forty-eight three cents, and then County Route Thirteen, Glen Athol Road, in the amount of four hundred twenty thousand dollars. Motion made by Supervisor McDevitt, second by Supervisor Beatty. Discussion. Supervisor Bramer. I see the source says general fund unappropriated surplus and transfers. Can we know how much is from each?
money or I would require some money out of the uh, unappropriated fund surplus uh, recently committee. So the transfer is basically that we're going to have uh, two existing projects that we already had. So it's approximately $282,000 uh, and that was for some of the projects that came in over the original estimated cost to create with the change of scope of work uh, on a few of those or basically based on the winter we had to, to shape the roads we're in. Uh, the next transfer of funding would be $585,000, which was going to the new Warrensburg Road and Coolidge project. And then the final amount coming out of the unappropriated surplus was $547,000, which was covered partially in Coolidge Road and the Glen Ace Road project. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, what is okay? So you're you're saying five hundred and forty-seven thousand will be coming out of our unappropriated. Correct. The rest of the transfers that we had, we had money left over to come from last year. Right. We didn't have money to put the project on the project as well. What? So three eighty-four two fifty-seven. What does this come to? Sorry. I don't have a total. Mm -hmm. So basically. Three hundred thousand. You were able to pull from other places. I was actually able to pull. We had approximately one point eight million dollars left over in the county road fund. Two of those projects, the projects that just did not get done last year. One of them was the Main Street project because Andrea was uh, there was a tension that she was going to put a water line in along that project. So we didn't finish that project this year. So there was six hundred, six hundred something thousand in that project. The other project we didn't finish last year was 13th Lake Road because we, uh, on further review, decided that we were going to do a cold depth reconstruction and replace a lot of the culverts up there. So that project was approximately $385,000, give or take. So it was, it was about a million dollars between those two projects that were left over in the county road fund from last year. That left an extra $867,000, I believe it was in the road balance or the road fund balance that we were going to bring forward this year and use on these three new projects as well as the ones that went uh, over budget uh, or not over budget but the estimated and the premium was the higher on the tip. So that 800000 is covering some of those but we still needed more to cover these, these three new projects. So that's about 300000 then from the... Uh, from the fund balance would be 500. 547. Okay. Yeah, and that actually goes into the next item. Oh. Um, so we do have a motion and oh. a second. Uh, all those in favor? Wait, can oh. I? Okay. Opposed? Carried. Item E, request to appropriate funds in the amount of $547,000 from the general fund unappropriated surplus to the county road fund. Uh, to pay for additional 2019 road projects and to authorize the appropriation of funds in the amount of 502000 from the general fund unappropriate surplus to the DPW road machinery fund to pay for the purchase of additional equipment. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Supervisor Gary, <coughs> seconded by Supervisor Fraser. Do you have a discussion? Okay, go ahead. Okay, thanks. Are these roads that we were that we had in the original list, I'm looking at our budget officer, were those projects that we wanted to pay for out of the general fund versus putting them in this year's budget? They, they were ones that we deferred until we saw how we were going to do with the fund balance That's, and the equipment. We did the same thing with equipment. And then we discussed it at DPW, the last DPW meeting, we, we went through all this. So the 547 is coming out of fund balance to do these projects that were taken off the initial list, correct, right? right. And then add it if we had a, a, a decent fund balance. And the 502 from the equipment was the same thing. He reduced the equipment fund balance. We had discussion about that last time, particularly about the grade hall, the $400,000 grade hall that we deferred. I believe that's how this all came about. It was vetted at the DPW meeting and a lot of discussion. Can I make one other suggestion too? In the future, Kevin, can we do a better job at breaking down the, the money when you're doing this? I mean, I, I, I did ask the last meeting and some of the questions in here. I think I will break it down in a, in a spreadsheet from here on out. So yeah, I think you need to provide a little bit more. And we'll avoid the questions. But but yeah, 
Yeah. That's why I'll mm -hmm. make the motion. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, last year we did the same thing when we, uh, I think we added in another 500000 or something like that to the uh, project. It was somewhere in there. Um, okay. Any any other? Uh, One more. What's ahead. our current fun general fund balance, please? It is, well, after today, We've got the railroad that we're coming up next. Uh, we'll be left with uh, two hundred fifty-two thousand eight hundred seventy-nine dollars. Oh, that's contingent. You oh, I'm sorry. You want to know what the fund? Uh, general fund. Oh, is general it, fund. Is it done? Is it done? I don't know. We have that closed bookshelf. It won't be done until then. Done right now. We're right around. I'm going to say we're right around. Like Thank you. Okay, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. <coughs> okay, Parks and Rec. Uh, Chairman, I've got a question. Oh, I'm sorry. The forecast that you provided us for the next or four the forecast uh, that I provided uh, for first of all for 2018 assumed that we would uh, finish the year a little bit by adding a little more fund balance to uh, what we had at the end of uh, 2017 uh, as the treasurer stated they're still working on that I think uh, if I had to guess I think that that would probably be understated a little so uh, the um, the forecast uh, that we built in did not have uh, it, it had I, I can verify this but I believe it had more than what we appropriated this year for the road and equipment projects okay moving on uh, item F we have a request to transfer the fu uh, funds contingent account in the amount of 7500 to cover the cost of utility bills for the county railroad. So moved. Moved by Supervisor Bramer, second by Supervisor Merlino. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Item 7, referral from Support Services, Board of Elections. Uh, this was a request <laughs> to establish a reserve fund in the amount of 84000 to purchase the future purchase of electric ele election equipment and authorizing the appropriation of funds in the amount of 84000 the general fund unappropriated surplus to provide funding for same. Now this was vetted to a T in uh, support services. Motion made by Supervisor Graham, second by Supervisor Garrity. Uh, any discussion? There was some funds left in the state budget, but not for the machines, but for those early voters. But still, I think we do need to establish this fund going forward. Yep. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Item 8. Uh, we have requests to be discussed and items to be discussed by the county administrator. Ryan, go right ahead. Sure. The first is the uh, customary journal report uh, transfers that's in the packet. If anybody has any questions on any of those transfers, I'd be happy to answer. The uh, second item, uh, last month uh, we authorized uh, property and casualty insurance uh, consultant to uh, help us out with the property and casualty insurance renewal, hopefully save the county some money. Uh, we haven't done a, an outside review of the program since uh, I think the early 2000s uh, figured it, it was uh, overdue to do this. Uh, at the time uh, we stated that we would pay for uh, the uh, cost of this by shifting money around within the clerk of the board's insurance budget into the unallocated insurance line, any monies that we didn't spend. Uh, that ultimately came to about $1,200. Uh, I also initially planned on shifting some money out of the county administrator's uh, Westmount budget. Uh, it turns out, however, that we need to keep the billing company for another year uh, to continue to do the run out uh, claims from Westmount. Uh, so we propose to take that, the balance from uh, the contingency account. Uh, and as uh, Chairman Sokol stated, uh, right now, prior to the May board meeting, uh, we are, uh, excuse me, the April board meeting, we're in April, 
uh, we're a little bit lower than the 275 that we initially appropriated and uh, after all of the uh, contingency appropriations uh, that we believe may be authorized in the April meeting will be more around 250,000. Okay. Is there a motion made by Supervisor Bramer? Seconded by Supervisor Straub. Discussion, Supervisor Bramer? Yeah, I was just thinking, you know, we had way more than 275. I mean, that was our original, our normal contingency amount, but we also had money in there for the PBA settlement. Correct. We had a contingency appropriation in last year's budget for the PBA settlement that we reappropriated into uh, this year's budget. We have an additional contingency appropriation for the PBA settlement cost for the year 2019 that, that's in this year's budget. Uh, I believe we're still, uh, we've paid out some of the retro. Um, we are in the process, I believe, in down in payroll of figuring out what exactly we'll need for the remainder of the year based on the, dip, the changing staff uh, levels in the Sheriff's Department. I do expect that we'll have uh, some leftover funds there. We just don't know how much yet. The settlement is done? The settlement is you done. Pass that already? Oh. Okay, you start over. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we do have Thank a motion you. and a second. Just a quick question. How much was the consultant? Um, that is a good question. One thousand one hundred seventy four. Right well, number? I think that's one in the that, back, that's right? no, well, yeah, the, it would be the balance of these two uh, transfers. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Ten grand. Ten grand. Yep. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Item C. <coughs> the uh, final item uh, under my column is. Uh, an appropriation of funds from the Westmount Legacy Reserve. Uh, I believe we're probably around five million dollars after the uh, 2018 year end close. Uh, this is for uh, this is uh, for Medicaid overpayments associated with care that was provided at Westmount. Uh, Omega did a customary audit, um, determined we initially thought that this was going to be more in the neighborhood of thirty thousand dollars. Uh, Tammy DiLorenzo and uh, the former staff from Westmount who are still working with the county worked really hard on this and got it down to uh, 11 and change. Motion. motion made by Supervisor Garrity, seconded by Supervisor Strau. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Anything else, Ryan? No, just uh, one point on this. The good news is uh, that 11,000 will come out, but Mary has an item to put uh, 6,500 back in. <laughs> and that leads to number nine, Mayor. <laughs> So um, number nine is a settlement with a former Westmount um, resident. It was a private pay client. He owed $6,465. He's offered to pay $200 a month and sign a confession of judgment to secure that debt. Um, so we just need a resolution approving that. Motion made by Supervisor Merlino, second by Supervisor Bramer. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Item 10, Finance Committee Action, is required on the following items approved by the Personnel and Higher Education Committee, and those are Agenda Items 3A and 4, made by Supervisor Garrity, seconded by Supervisor Dickinson. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. No pending items. Uh, privilege of the floor. Supervisor Beatty. Yeah, um, wh where are we on the uh, collection of the half a million um, that we didn't bill correctly or coded incorrectly? Or um, I, I know we had hired someone. Uh, I'll ask Ryan, I guess, because I know we had hired someone, Ryan, to to go and see if we could get reimbursement from the state. And last I knew, we hadn't. But then we were going to try again. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, Tammy has worked uh, very closely on this. Uh, I think we're at the point where pursuing this any further is going to be counterproductive. We're just going to spend money and not get anything back. Uh, the, there is a time frame for uh, disputing uh, these payments that long since passed. Uh, what happened here was when the operation at Westmount was winding down, uh, we, the, the state at the same time was tightening up uh, the regulations. Uh, they were requ requiring a lot more documentation, a lot more legwork to go into these claims. Our staff, we didn't have the manpower, we didn't have the training to do it at the time. Uh, I think that we've gone down just about every avenue we can in terms of trying to get the state to uh, waive the uh, 
the time limitations. But I don't think that I don't think ultimately we're going to get any of that money back, and we will probably be coming to write off all of it, um, if not all of it, the vast majority of it. Uh, it would be a write-off against the Westmount uh, Legacy Fund, not against uh, the general fund balance. Uh, but we are also in the process of, we were just uh, uh, discussing this yesterday, county treasurer and county attorney, of uh, developing a formal collection policy for the county. I don't believe we have anything on the books, I think we should, that speaks to how we go about collecting bad debts when something is called a bad debt and written off, uh, what the procedures are for that uh, in terms of having board approval. Uh, we're developing that policy right now, and it was my intention to bring back the uh, Westmount uh, issue once we have that policy underneath us. But I'm not optimistic at all about it. Thank you. Anyone else? I guess if nothing else, then a motion to adjourn. Motion made by Supervisor Dickinson, second by Supervisor McDevitt. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. <coughs>